Father Paul Charbonneau's daily talks to the residents of the Brentwood Recovery Home. Talk number eight, maturity. Now, in order to make sound, responsible decisions, your intelligence, your reason, has to be free to think. It has to be capable, qualified. If your heart is closed, full of self, then you will be filled with sadness, with frustrations, with anger, with resentments, with hate, with self-pity, with confusion. As the disease progresses, your heart closes and your heart closes all wrapped up with self and you see everything from your own point of view, what it means to you. And you're full of self and you're full of self and things don't go your way. Well, you try to divest your feelings and emotions from your job, but not always. Because if your job is getting you down, if you had a hard time at home and you're all in turmoil and you're in confusion and you're in turmoil, then you carry that at work and then you can have all those reactions at work and then your decisions to do this to the boss or whatever, whatever. And then you all worked up and all worked up and you go to the pub and you work this up and you work this up, the hate, the resentment, the self-pity and so on, you know, and then people keep filling you and filling you, you know, with the boss, boom, like this, and filling you with the woman, the woman, you know, like this. Well, the old lady, you know, and the kids, by the time you get home, you're like that, you know, and you go whack like this, you know. An intelligent man can act as stupid as a horse bun. Decisions pertaining to maturity and responsibility for our own good and the good of others. And forget that. But an alcoholic, and as this disease progresses, then... Forget about any kind of maturity or any kind of responsibility, even at your work, driving your car at work or anything else, and everything begins, begins to be diseased, and the whole thing begins just to be one, one mess. An intelligent person can lose his job, can lose his house, can lose his family. Is that very intelligent? And day by day, his decisions are such that they only harm him and not harm others, you know, and no way can he make decisions for love, for peace, for happiness, either for his own good or anybody else. That's intelligent, that's mature, that's freedom, that's horseshit. That's the disease of alcoholism. In our maturity, in our freedom, in order to be free, to know the will of God and do the right, responsible, honest thing for ourselves day by day and for others, We have to be free of the past or the future. But see, the alcoholic lives in the past and lives in the future. And let's take you through the process. My life is wrapped up with self. Then I'm really concerned of what happened to me two hours ago, last night, two days ago. I'm retaining, and I'm in turmoil with either fear or guilt or resentment or self-pity or hate or rejection, whatever it might be that happened to me two hours ago between me and him or me and her, or two days ago, fear, guilt, whatever. And I rehash that, and I'm involved in that, and that bothers the hell out of me and so on. And then... I am making those decisions ahead of time, what I'm going to say to her, what I'm going to say to him, what I'm going to do the next time I see him. Well, I'm really concerned of what's going to happen to me tonight when I go to face her, or the meeting I have to go to, or the bill I have to pay tomorrow. I can't shake that. That begins to possess me, to occupy me. How about right now? Right now it doesn't exist for us. 
I'm still into last night. I'm still into two days ago. Or I'm into three hours from now. You talk about immaturity. You talk about strength. When you're in such turmoil and it's got you and it's got you and you can't get out of it. And you're going to base your decisions on this turmoil, on this hate, on this resentment, on this self-pity, on this retaliation, this confusion, this fear, this guilt. That's mature. And you cannot use your intelligence, you cannot use anything that you should be using to, ha to handle this important decision now, this responsibility that you have right now at 10 o'clock in the morning in the family or at work or at 3 o'clock or 5 o'clock when you're supposed to be home and you're not there or at 8 o'clock at night, you know, the kids need this or the wife brings this up to you. That's penis stuff because after six or eight hours, you're like that with what happened to you at 10 o'clock in the morning or you're still like that what happened to you last night or what happened to you on your way home. Either you're not home when you should be, or when you are there, you're so occupied with yourself, so into yourself, that you don't have the interest, the concern, or the ability to free yourself of self and to occupy yourself in that loving, responsible way to the problems at hand. You do it, you go, I don't have time, or whatever, or you're in such a mood that they have to keep it from you. And therefore, it's impossible for you, when you're dealing with people, to give yourself to people, to be that open, to respond to their needs in an intelligent, responsible way that has to be based on love and the spiritual principles, which you ain't got one of. And it just gets worse and worse day by day. When you come to a place like this, then everything hinges on what we call a date of time, and nobody understands a date of time until I explain it. Because everybody's going to think, yeah, you do your best today, thinking of terms of hours or minutes or whatever today. That's bullshit. You don't know anything about Brentwood until you come face to face with it in this meeting, until you get it the way I'm going to present it to you. You still got it your own way. And your way, way isn't worth peanuts, as far as I'm concerned. Otherwise, you would not be here. Our problem is people. Our problem is disease. That the only person that's important is me. And we live that way, preoccupied with self. And we just went through this whole idea of living in the past or the future, which means what happened to me an hour ago or 15 minutes ago, or what might happen to me an hour or 15 minutes from now, what I want to happen, what I intend to happen, what I'm going to make happen. And we live that way. And we don't want anybody to interfere with that. Because nothing else means that much to us. And we become preoccupied and we become tired and feathered that way, and we become molded that way, we conform to that, and that's the way we become. When we come into a place like this, we are still full of fear before you come. And when you're thinking way, way ahead of yourself, you come in here, you got all that past, all that guilt, all that fear, finances, wife, job, the whole bit, you know, and that grabs you and that grabs you and that grabs you. And you're here and those things are out there, still grabbing you, still twisting you around in circles. What? Three months, what in the hell is going to be? Am I going to be successful? How about my job? How about my family? How about this? If you've lived that way all your life, you're not going to drop that stuff like that. And as long as we can find a way out of this dilemma, and as long as we can find a way out of this turmoil and this grief and this pain and this hurt, then we'll do it. Whether not to go home, whether to get drunk, whether not to pay this bill, you do it, you do it, you're better. Avoid this, go there, not go there, stay away from this, not talk about that. Freedom, ability, happiness, joy, in control. Nah, everything out of control because everything controls us.
but not just for a minute. Things can control you for hours, weeks and days, and months and years. Control you. And when we started off, we made the decision to be completely independent and free. Well, I would be in complete control of my life, and we end up, everything controls us, everything out of control, and we're not in control of everything. And still, we don't know what in the shit's happening. And still, we blame others. And still, we believe that tomorrow we're going to turn it around. And yet, we're afraid of tomorrow. And we hope tomorrow doesn't come. And sometimes, we're going to try to end it today so tomorrow doesn't come. That's life. That's living. A day at a time, we don't know a damn thing about it. We have trouble with people. We have a believing, trusting, loving problem. People are our problem. Living is our problem. Now, you got to tra train yourself to live with the people you happen to be with and train and develop the ability to pay attention to them. They mean something to you, to be concerned with them. Otherwise, we're just concerned with ourselves. And that's our disease. This is where we do it. We practice it with one another. We practice it with one another so that we develop the ability, so that we begin to have some ability out there to stay open, to be concerned, to be interested with the people that happen to be in my life, day by day, hour by hour. Then you can respond to their needs. You can allow them to respond to yours. That's how you can develop faith and trust. That's how you can develop love with people, with the people you happen to be with. Because if you reject the people you're with, then you're missing the opportunity for any kind of faith or trust or love or gratitude or respect or responsibility. That's when you make the decision to come here. And we hope it's not too late to get it going. When you come here, you put all your ideas out. Because any idea that you have about what life is, what's missing, what's needed, is wrong. All this is brand new to you. And you better make the effort to pay attention to me and start getting it this way. You water any of this down, you change any of this, you're wasting your bloody time. It's not only an insult that you would think that by the time you came here that any of your ideas would be better than mine. A day at a time. <coughs> Meaning the people in my life, the person in my life, at this moment, they have to become important. That's how you develop faith and trust and respect and love with this person, these people, not with somebody maybe in the future, the people that maybe you might be with tonight and so on. You tried that. I love him, her, them, my wife, my parents, my children, my brother, my sister. These other, piss on him, boom him, boom him. But that's how you, that's what you were practicing. That's what you were developing. Boom him, boom him, till you boomed everybody, and then finally everybody said, boom you. Fair is fair. Always a turnaround in God's language. What you do to others, that's what's going to happen to you. Fair? Yeah, that's fair. You reject, you don't have time, you don't care, okay, you're going to get your turn. They reject, they don't care. That's honest, That's, that makes sense. You can't have your cake and eat it. You can't have double standards. We thought we could.
Okay, that's what, that's what I do. But it's not right that you people do that to me. No. I'm the breadwinner. I'm the guy. I should be treated different. You're going to be treated the same way you treat others. Those are the rules of the game, boys. And what happens to others, and what you cause others, is going to happen to you. Now, you want to turn things around. You start making those people important. You listen to them. You pay attention to them. You cooperate with them. You make them feel important. You got time for them. You got to become interested. You got to be concerned. Not if you're preoccupied with self. That won't happen like it's happened. Day by day, hour by hour, person by person. You commit yourself to that. Then you're being sincere. You're being honest about your recovery from being an alcoholic into a human being. But don't you pick and choose like you've done all your lives. Who are you going to be nice to? Who are you going to pay attention to? Who's important enough for you to be concerned or interested in? You're wasting your time. That's what you've done all of your lives. And this is what happened to you. But see, like I keep telling you, it will be worse. Because now you know. Now you know from the others who have done this that it can be different. It is different.